Alright, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This, of course, is another anime reaction video. Today, we're getting into some more 91 days. If I seem a little bit off or a little bit frazzled, so to speak, <clears throat> and if my voice starts to go through this video, I dearly apologize. Uh, I just got done recording the my reaction to the special 20th anniversary chapter for Bleach. Goddamn, it was that a fucking roller coaster of a goddamn chapter. Um, that'll definitely go up before this video comes out, I don't know when, but I just want to make sure that I record this video so, um, I don't end up breaking my daily upload streak, uh, so we're gonna get into this episode, really excited to see what happens next, because the last episode, the way it ended was such a fucking mindfuck, dude, <laughs> for one thing, we now know who, uh, Angelo's main street targets are, is it Angelo? It's Angelo the... the no, wait. Angelo Lagusa. Yes. So we know Angelo's three targets. Uh, Vano Vanetti. Oh, no, wait. Was Vano just one of the people that was there? But then we've got Nero Vanetti, and I believe Vincent Vanetti, if that was something that was mentioned in the actual letter in the episode, or if I'm just remembering it because I looked it up on the Wikipedia and accidentally. Either, either way. Either fucking way. I'm really excited to see what happens next, because we killed Vano. He's dead. And... The bodies disappeared, and I can't, I honestly can't tell you who stole it, because unlike Bakano, this doesn't seem to be that like there's any like supernatural elements to it. Like Bakano had the fucking I forget what it's called, but the like the the immortal cannibal or whatever <laughs> on the train, and there was the immortality potion. Uh, but this it seems a bit more grounded in reality, so to speak. Um, so it's gonna be really interesting to see who was involved. Only person I can maybe think of is the person who wrote the letter that uh identified the killers so uh, angelo could go on his revenge and stop living his like hollow life because that apartment was empty as fuck and he was just like pickpocketing people so it's, the biggest mysteries is who the fuck wrote the letter and who took the body right now those are the two biggest mysteries i'm thinking either coletto had something to do with the body or whoever wrote the letter had something to do with it and there's gonna be some like sick twist at the end where it was all a way to f frame angelo uh for all the shit he did and make him suffer because uh angelo's father who was i believe maybe in the mafia as well based on their interactions in the first episode with the flashback and and now <laughs> and that resulted in some guys i i don't know i'm theorizing like a while here most of it's probably fucking wrong <laughs> so we're just gonna get straight into episode three of 91 days I'm gonna stick with the dub for now because i haven't gone back to rewatch the episodes and sub but i, I enjoy the dub for for what it is so, as always, unless you're new here, links down in the description below will take you to the full-length uncut reaction, where you can watch the reaction, and after you watch the reaction, you can come back to YouTube for the discussion. So, let's get started with episode 3 of 91 Days. This is a fucking great episode. I'm really, ugh. I'm glad we're starting to uh, learn a bit more about, like, the family relations, because, honestly... Generally, I'm never super into, like, political, like, thrillers or whatever. Like, obviously, I enjoy, um, the first half of Attack on Titan Season 3. That was really interesting, but I've, I was... It started off very different and then tra sort of transitioned into that. But the fact that this is uh, this whole... The... Not even political drama or intrigue or whatever. It's, it's fucking mafia thriller, and it's kind of similar to those, where it's just... Where a big part of the, the tension comes between, like, the discussions these families are having around the actual, like events taking place, because when you think about it, no, technically not much has happened so far. The The main sort of thing that's, the main event that sort of happened is Vano was killed, and at the scene of where he was killed, there was the dead body of a member of a different family. And so now a majority of this episode was just either investigations into it, or discussion around it, and like discussion of the fucking the repercussions of what and of what this is and what it could mean you know what i mean but for the relationship between the families and i think that's really interesting it's really cool how, the, how they're sort of how they're sort of doing this and it doesn't really and maybe it will get old as i go on with the show but so far it hasn't really necessarily been like boring even and and that might be just because of the uniqueness of the setting because it's it's just it's just america during the prohibition era that, that's it and maybe I'm just not super familiar with the setting personally because it's an it's an interesting like time period. It's just not something I really actively look into. Matter of fact, the only thing that I've seen that takes place in a similar time zone is parts of the Bakano anime, obviously. And 
you know, Cowboy Bebop kind of has like that's somewhat of uh, that sort of aesthetic while still being like a sci-fi either way either way <laughs> really cool really cool uh really interesting it wasn't said outright but it, it was almost like he was trying to frame him what was it coletto was trying to frame i forget his name but the guy who's behind the behind the bar whether or not he actually was and whether or not they were just trying to figure out where the body was it was sort of an interesting tactic i think it was Okay, yeah, no, it was definitely them trying to figure out the body, but it almost felt like they were trying to push the blame onto him. Though I, I imagine they would have realized that that, that probably wouldn't have worked. F what? <sighs> Fongo, why are you still alive? <laughs> that's my biggest. That's my biggest thing right now. Fongo's still alive. You, you can, can you stop, please? Uh. Anyway, I, I kind of want more information on the the body collector guy because he. I, even though, to be fair, he's probably just a background guy who was only introduced as a way to help explain why the body wasn't there. But it just, like, seems so weird to me. Unless I'm, like, forgetting something from this episode. <laughs> he, just, he just buys bodies? For what? <laughs> For what reason? Uh, let's see, let's see. The, the ploy they tried to pull with pretending one of them was Serpente was interesting. Though I have to ask, what exactly was their plan... If Serpente, or not Serpente, if Fongo had, hadn't called their fucking, their bluff and reached for his, uh, his, his penis pistol or whatever you want to call it, what, what, what would have happened? Because then that, uh, then, um, uh, I would imagine they would take the bag off when, uh, they got close if, uh, Angelo didn't have any plans to, like, go at him with a knife or something. Even still, it seemed like a sh very shaky plan. It, it definitely seems like something last minute that they had to tr quickly come up with because they're like, ah, shit. Uh, Nero, I saw I saw this bitch Fongo outside. We gotta we gotta do something about this. You know what I mean? But anyways, that aside. Next up in this next episode, it looks like we're gonna be start we're gonna start going to the countryside. Just Nero and uh, Angelo. But the problem is, is that Fongo is on a war path. He wants this. He stated outright, uh, I've always wanted a, a war with the Venetis, and now I finally got it. And he fucking cut his tongue with this... Maybe maybe that was a case of him just, like, trying to, like, hurt because he feels sad and he doesn't have any other way to, like, express that, I guess. That's why he's cut his tongue, tasted his blood, uh, because he's like, finally, or whatever. I, I don't know what you want to call it. I imagine that Nero and Angelo aren't going to be on, alone together on the countryside for very long. And definitely while they're out, they're not going to be... We're not, we're not going to have Nero killed by Angelo just yet. He's got to be prevalent throughout it. Because he seems like... It seems like they're going to have that bond. Where even though there's like... Th what connects them is their want to like kill each other or whatever. They're still going to form this weird friendship. <laughs> despite all that. Which is... There's always an interesting plot point to go with. But, again, like I said, they're probably not going to be out there for too long because there's no way Fongo's going to sit on his ass and just wait for whatever. He's going to try and get this war started as soon as possible, most likely. And whether or not he goes through, like, p the proper channels, so to speak, uh, through the different leaders and, like, the captains and, like, the different ranked officers of each group, it's yet to be seen, but I, I don't think he'll he'll do this the, the, the proper way, you know what I mean? And... Yeah, it's gonna drink. It's gonna draw them. It's gonna draw those two back for sure. So I'm really, I'm really interested to see where things are gonna go in the future. Uh, and I like the kind of symbolism here at the end, where it was raining, but when they're driving away together, it's sort of there's you can see the rainbow as it slowly, slowly starts stops raining. So the the rain is Vano's death, but then their new, their new uh, friendship that they'll find on this life changing, uh, <laughs> what you would call it road trip and then and then at some point we're gonna kill Va we're gonna kill fongo <laughs> Ugh, but at the same time yeah it seems like war is looming so i don't think this this rainbow so to speak is gonna last very long unless i'm reading too into things <laughs> but um either way i'm gonna get into the next episode now episode four 91 days ne episode four of 91 days i cannot say that too fast or it sounds like i'm saying episode four 91 days 491 days you're right uh, whatever. 
It sounds like I'm saying episode 491 of a show called Days or something. I don't know. I'm going to get into that now. Oh, this was a great episode because we got a bit more action in it, which I'm really, I'm really happy for. I, I, I mentioned that I enjoyed the sort of a, uh, you know, table discussions uh, around some of the actions from before. Those were really interesting, of course. But seeing sort of like, it's almost like, it's just like the travels of two guys that aren't friends. But if you didn't know prior, you would think they're just two friends hanging out together, traveling the country, which is our would, would already be an interesting premise by itself. But the chemistry between them, it's not, it, it's fine. It, it's kind of, it, it, it's, it definitely always constantly has like that awkward aura about it, where it's clearly Nero trying to, you know, get involved and talk to Angelo, but he's just, Angelo's just so distant and disconnected from him because of what happened in the past. And I'm, I might have to go back at some point just to look to see uh, if the person that ran into the house, oh wait, I don't remember who it was who actually killed any of the people in the in the actual home, because if Nero was the one who chased him outside of the house and almost pulled the trigger but didn't, he still might have had some kind of something to do with the killing, which I think works in helping uh, Angelo not Angelo, Nero be more morally gray, because obviously things aren't always black and white, you know. But I figured they might have gone the road if he was the one outside, the fourth one outside, who basically had nothing to do with the actual killing. He was just kind of there. And that would sort of put this conflict into into Angelo's head, where it's like, oh, I want to kill him for revenge, but at the same time, technically he had nothing to do with it. But even still, they would be conflict on each other, and he probably would still have to kill Nero, because Nero would not sit there quietly while uh, Angelo killed his uh, the rest of his people. And I don't know if secretly deep down Nero still has suspicions that... Uh, uh, Angelo, or Bruno, as he knows him, had something to do with the killing of Vano. I don't know if he just wholeheartedly believes him. But it would be interesting to see their, their uh, the development of uh, their relationship. Because no matter what, they're all bad people who do bad things for one reason or another. And so, at the very least, I feel like mm, Angelo is going to like at least find it hard to kill him later on because he spent so much time with him and seeing as even though he is a bad guy and does bad things he's still a human being with a you know different people that he cares about different people that care about him his own priorities his own way of thinking type thing you know what i mean so and, and you know what <laughs> even though there's bad blood with them that's not totally obvious to um one of the people in the relationship uh, uh, I don't know, but it was interesting how they set up the the whole David and Goliath thing, because they sent there's this huge fucking uh, Mexican guy with weapons that's coming after them, and <laughs> and he has no eyebrows by the way. That's nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But then they set up the whole like Bible reference, uh, Goliath. You know the guy from the Bible. You know, that's like a, a sort of a weird little thing, and. I thought, if anything, I thought they were going to, like, do the David and Goliath thing with uh, Angelo being David and Goliath being the Mafia itself. Because in inadvertently, through his revenge-fueled uh, killings, he would end up bringing about the end of the Mafia. Even though, realistically, he shouldn't be able to because he's just one guy. But it was actually this guy. And Angelo was still technically David in this situation because he even had the, you know, the slingshot. You know, the way David um, made it... Um, a hand, like a, 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 a slingshot of shorts, sh sh shorts, then killed Goliath with it. Just it's just, just like a story of like uh, ingenuity or whatever, and it, it's really interesting. It's really interesting how they decided to set that up, and I wonder what kind of potentially uh, additional eccentric uh, assassins are gonna see uh, going forward. Because the, the fact that they're setting up that assassins are being sent after them at all. I mean, I mean they have to do at least an episode or two more of them. Otherwise, we're going to go straight back to uh, the conflict with, uh, with the Orcos and the uh, Glossios, I believe, and uh, the Benetti family. Which is in an interesting by itself, but still, I'm kind of interested in seeing more of the travels between uh, Angelo and uh, Nero. So, yeah. I hope, that's, I hope that's kind of what we get. But... 
With that all being said, that's pretty much all I have to say about this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload in the future. That all being said, thank you once again for watching. Peace.